when I put this out there, I didn't know whether or not it would be a, something people want to come to or not, but it was something I would have attended uh, a couple of years ago when I was working through um, trying to get an idea to beta. So I uh, figured I would um, present on it and give back. So uh, my name is Brandon Rothy. Uh, I'm currently manager sales operations at SAP. I say currently. That is my job. Um, on the side, I'm a co-founder of uh, RoomPoll. Um, my founder, co-founders in here, um, Phil Mackey and uh, Mike. Mike, I always screw up your last name. Is it Schreifel? Yeah. So, um, all these slides are out on my um, kind of personal brand website that I use just because I don't want to use my company business card and stuff. So if you go to DSTRB or Disturb.com, you can find the slides. So um, if that's all you needed, you can get up and leave. Don't do that. Um, so. <clears throat> Here's kind of a quick agenda for what I'm going to cover today. Um, you can read through it. I won't read the other slides. What I think we're going to do today is uh, we're going to move through the content pretty quick. You're not going to retain all the links and all that other stuff, so you can just go get them from the website um, and see all the different resources out there. Because what I want to do is leave time for um, QA, feedback, and also um, if people have an idea that they want to get started, that they could... Um, you know, come up and kind of pitch to the group here and get feedback or have other people that go, hey, that's a great idea. I'd love to help you with that. Um, I'd rather, you know, we try to use this for that, if that makes sense. So, um, all right, so ideas. Um, there's no such thing as a bad idea, in my opinion. It's just a limited market, right? So have you ever seen Homer Simpson's car? You know, um, very specific to, to one person. But then again, there's also this Lamborghini. There's only nine of them made, but it's 4.5 million. So you can kind of figure out your price range there as far as uh, market size and stuff like that. So um, <clears throat> this is a great thing. A guy named Derek, I think it's Sivers or Sievers. I don't know how you say it, but it's hard to read. But your idea is only worth you know a dollar basically because without execution, it doesn't matter, right? Um, you could have the idea for Twitter, but if you never build it, it doesn't matter. So he kind of gives this idea of, you know, a good idea is worth 10 points, and then you multiply it by execution. So my opinion is share your ideas. You might have the, you know, the greatest idea, and you're worried people are going to steal it. Trust me, they won't. Um, and if they do, it was a good idea, and they executed on it, and you didn't. So um, <laughs> that's just how life goes, right? I mean, you know, so... Um, and, and so if you do have an idea, get building something today, right? I mean, start a, what, what is called a minimal, uh, minimum viable product, right? And if you don't have an idea, right, what I always recommend to people is, you know, listen to what people are complaining about or what you're complaining about or what people are spending money to avoid, right? I mean, how many people do their own taxes versus paying somebody to do them, you know? And then the risk avoidance there and stuff like that. Um, or... Find somebody else that has an idea because maybe you can help them make that idea a reality if you don't have one. So, um, My recommendation is read and attend as many events, websites, books, etc. So these are just kind of a few of the different things I use for kind of keeping up on different things and getting ideas going. Um, I think today, um, if you're well read and you understand what's going on out there. You know, you hear about Uber, right, which is like on-demand car service, and then you think about something like um, house cleaning, right? We were just at the uh, Heroic um, that shut down, the failed startup one, right? So if you think about like, hey, what if somebody did on-demand house cleaning? You know, Uber for house cleaning. So stuff like that. You don't know that if you don't read about different ideas happening in the market space or what people are putting out there or sharing. So, so minimum viable product. So, um, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> sprinkles. You don't need sprinkles on a donut, right? A donut is what it is. Um, so getting to kind of that minimal product is critical. Um, the other thing, too, is just keeping stuff simple. Right, so this is something that I've had on my desk for like I think the last five years, um, but it's basically saying, don't try to like solve big problems. Even though you should, you still got to solve local problems. Um, there's a good book, uh, Chip and Dan Heath. Uh, book is called Switch, 
which talks about getting people to uh, make change. And what they do is they highlight uh, small things that are working, right? So you guys have probably seen stuff today that are working well. Right? Like that whiteboard out there. I bet that kind of works well. If you post a message out there and somebody sees it, they'll respond to it. But, you know, it might not be, uh, if you're in one of these sessions, to, like, stand up and yell out something, right? So, anyway. So start simple, right? So, um, you know, <laughs> you can see what's way too much versus good. Uh, and this doesn't just apply to, like, internet stuff, right? Because I think a lot of people get too focused on, like, websites and social media, but physical products, right? So if you've ever, you know, had to rake leaves, and if you just try to use those bags on their own, it's <laughs> nowhere near as uh, fun if you have one of those uh, bag shoots, right? You have one of those bag shoots, makes all the difference in the world. Do you think it costs much to make that? You can, you know, get a refrigerator uh, box, cardboard, you know, from it, put it in there, you're good. That's your MVP. So, um, bacon bowl. That's really just a muffin pan, right? Upside down with bacon wrapped around it and baked. But some, somebody decided to make it into a product, so. They got my $12. Yep, <laughs> Phil, Phil bought one. He loves it. Comes with bacon, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, a lot of people, though, do start with web-based stuff. I mean, I, I think about, like, Craigslist. It's probably hard to see that. But, like, Craigslist, I don't think they've changed their look and feel since they've gone live, you know? I mean, that, that is an MVP that's stayed an MVP. But it's evolved, right? But I mean, Twitter, Facebook, Yelp, Blogger, all of these were really, really like basic, simple ideas. And they go from there. Like you think about when Apple introduces stuff like, you know, the Shuffle or the iPhone, it didn't have copy and paste. Why? That's complicated. Let's get something out there that's simple, see what people like or complain about, and then iterate on that. So um, with MVPs, same thing. So focus on minimum. Your idea is also an MVP, right? As you're telling people about your idea, listen to the feedback, right? Understand what they're saying. And then um, if it's a physical product or a website, don't give them much instruction, right? See what they kind of do with it and what questions they ask, you know? Um, that's going to be more valuable to you to understand what you need to focus on than if you're trying to interrupt them or tell them what it should be doing. And then um, accept that people will be confused, right? I mean, people didn't get Twitter when it was first. People still don't get Twitter. Um, LinkedIn, you know, Facebook, all these different things. But, like, you know, when you think about it today, there's some stuff that just now it's like how, you know, like the Internet. How could we not live without the Internet or cat pictures on the Internet? Um, so one of the examples of a physical product, um, it's hard to see here because it's all washed out, but... Post-it notes, right? So it's actually a post-it note tablet. You can't see it. But um, so let's say you had the idea for post-it notes, but you didn't have a way to create it today, right? But you do have, and you can't see it here, but you do have notepads and double-sided tape. So you could put double-sided tape on a notepad on each sheet. Take you a while, but it's still, you know, and show it to somebody and go, hey, wouldn't this be cool if I could just tear this off and stick it on the wall? People would get that, right? So that's an example of a physical kind of uh, MVP. The other thing, too, I don't, I've never been to Twin Cities Maker. Has anybody in the room ever been to Twin Cities Maker? It seems like the coolest thing out there. Is it? Yeah. So I'm, like, looking at this. They've got MIG-TIG welding. I think that's probably pretty cool. Like, that's putting metal together, right? Laser cutter basics. That's a class or a session. Like, I, the advanced course would probably be pretty cool, too, I bet. They have open houses. And they also have pre-bookings for a full-spectrum laser. I don't know what I would do with that, but I might want to go and just check that out. So um, if you want to get something made out of, you know, aluminum or something, go there. They have an open house. I mean, you know, there's nothing stopping you, and there's probably somebody that's going to be like, this is cool, let's do it, you know. Um, <clears throat> mobile apps. So one of the things that I used, so these little notebooks, you can go get them at Target, right? <laughs> So you can basically just draw out kind of what you're thinking and then use these little flags to move to different pages, you know, to show somebody what you're thinking. This is about the size of a phone. It's a simple way to kind of create an MVP. So um, they also, this uh, UI stencils company, they sell these stencils, right? iPad, iPhone, um, Android. I think they have Windows 8 ones. I don't, I don't know what you do with those, <laughs> but um, <laughs> probably good coasters. No. Um, 
and then they also have an app on their app store, you can see it in the link in the corner there, um, where you take pictures of the actual pads of paper, and then you can actually make hot spots in the pictures, and then that becomes your app. And then you can show how stuff flows and works through it. You can also do the same with Keynote, PowerPoint, stuff like that too, so. Um, <clears throat> so the other thing too is websites. So you may not be a web developer. I'm a very basic web developer, um, but there's these great sites like Weebly, Wix, Squarespace, WordPress, Google Sites. There's a ton of them out there that you can just start building sites, get a blog up there. It doesn't have to be cool or neat, um, but you know, just start building something, and then you're gonna figure out from there what people like. Um, one of the other things I wanna mention too, there's this great site called import.io. So if you use data in a website, right, so as we were kinda going through our project, um, we were thinking, all right, we, we would like to have data from like uh, restaurants or something. Import.io is basically like a web scraper. So it can go out there and pull content off the internet and, and it's all really user friendly, easy to use, GUI interface, right? And it'll pull content into a spreadsheet or it'll leave it on their system and you can use it as like an API you can call to that. So that, that's more the technical side, but basically if you want data in a spreadsheet and people can look it up, you can do that. So um, I'm gonna show you a Weebly here. This is gonna be hard to see, but um, it's all drag and drop, right? So if you can, you know, do an appointment on, uh, set a restaurant appointment on um, open table, you can probably do this thing really easily. The cool thing is it allows you to, um, you know, put buttons, maps in there, um, pictures, and then they also have a mobile view, and that's all part of it, it's free. You know, it's free for two sites. If you want 10 sites, it's a whole $50 a year. So I recommend you check out um, stuff like Weebly and Wix and and uh, uh, Squarespace and stuff. And for those of you who are maybe not so big on uh, iPhone, they also have an Android view. It's hard to see there though, so. Um, and then they also give you stats. So this is my uh, fantasy draft sheet. I put this site up like a year ago. I didn't do anything with it. But I'm getting like 20 people a day visiting it. Why, I don't know. It's showing up in Google results, but whatever. So for like literally no dollars, you've got a website, you can track traffic, and you can see what people are clicking on. Domain names. How many people own a domain name in here? Great. We won't cover a lot of that. Uh, but you can buy a, a lot of different names, a lot of different like .co, .ninja, or that's soon. Um, I, I wouldn't bid for premium names. I just buy a name you're happy with and go with it. You can always change it. Um, but one of the things that finding names is uh, sometimes a pain. So there's this, uh, I don't even know how to say it, it's like random mainer, <laughs> um, but it'll give you keyword suggestions off of the word you put in. The one I really like is impossibility. This, this is great, you can put in like a single letter and then it'll put words at the front or back of yours and show you what's available. So um, sicklook.com is available. So go out and get it if you want. Um, and then he also has a short domain search. So uh, Aki.io is available, um, you know, so if you're looking for a four letter domain name but not a .com, this is another great option, so. Um, business cards, Vistaprint, really easy, really simple, um, cheap, but I really like Moo.com. I don't know if you guys have seen Moo, but I mean they've got these really cool little, you know, ones, they're tiny, they're like 20 bucks, they look awesome. Um, so. Then, you know, so, so you've gone through some of those things. You don't need to get business cards and stuff like that, but it helps when you're meeting with people to not be like, oh, hey, here's my business card for my normal day job, but I'm trying to do this thing, you know, because you want to kind of, and that's part of the reason I kind of set up my own personal brand, because when I'm meeting with people, they're like, are you trying to sell me enterprise software, or what are you doing? You know, like, no, the goal is this. So that's why I set up my own personal brand, rather than, you know, saying I'm from SAP. Uh, so, what I would do is this. Once you've got kind of your core MVP ready, right, run through these exercises. How do you describe it to somebody 
in quick, short sentences. So like the one I use, Uber for house cleaning, right? Um, if you can't explain what it is in a sentence that people go, oh, I get it, or when you say it, they might say back to you, oh, is that kind of like Twitter for dogs? Um, you know, then, then you're getting either validation or you know you need to work on your marketing. Um, the other thing is creating a pitch deck. This isn't like you're not going out to get venture capital. But what it's doing is it's putting you through the processes of trying to understand what you know, you're trying to convey and what your business is about. Because as you go through this stuff, it's going to tell you a little bit more about your idea and what you're thinking. Also, pre-sell your idea. Um, if you've ever heard Clay Collins talk about, um, I think it's landing pages. I forget his company name, so I, forgive me. Um, but they pre-sold everything. So basically, he, he was like, hey, we're going to have this product coming out in two months. If you're interested, sign up here. And then people were actually paying for it because he had a blog talking about landing pages. And so first of all, he's got cash in the bank. And then second of all, he's got a deadline he's got to deliver on. So there's urgency and there's stuff like that. Um, the other thing I would say is apply to Y Combinator. Now, if you haven't heard of Y Combinator, they're out of the Bay Area. They've got a lot of, um, they're an incubator, basically. So people apply both, I think it's a winter and summer sessions. And if they accept your company, they'll put an investment in and stuff like that. The questions that they have on their website are really good to think about as you're going through an MVP and testing your idea. And then same for, um, Jeff Pesek mentioned about TechMN in one of the sessions, their beta byte section. And that's also a really good thing to go through. So here's some, of the, here's some of the questions. And these seem basic, but when you start to think through them, it really, you know, kind of gets you thinking about, well, who, who are my competitors? And, you know, um, what are we really making? And then what's the value to the customer? So... And then how are you going to get users and how are you going to make money, right? I mean, because, you know, one of the great things about um, the uh, heroic session, unfortunately, was they didn't really solve the money problem up front, right? They're kind of chasing money with more features. So um, now probably one of the most important things here is uh, how to find co-founders. So um, I've got at the bottom, there's a TED Talk by Derek Sievers again about how to start a movement. And one of the cool things about this is you can see leadership isn't as important as followers, right? Because uh, basically, I forget what he says in there, but basically a leader without people really isn't a leader, right? He's just a lone nut standing out on the lawn, I think is what he said. Um, but once you have a couple of followers, right, then you've got momentum, and then that's how a movement gets created from it. So go to events and meetups, right? You guys are here. That's part of the first step in the process. Keep going to these things. Yes, good job, congratulations. Um, get outside of your comfort zone, right? I don't do public speaking, so this is not, um, you can probably tell this isn't what I do normally. Um, attend, then participate, right? Don't show up and pitch your idea to a group of people immediately, right? N understand who the people are, the groups, um, I always love when I'm at uh, user groups for like developers and a recruiter shows up who doesn't know a lot about developing and they're sitting amongst the group. They're like, so uh, what do you do? And they're like, I'm a developer. What do you do? I'm a recruiter. Okay, great. And then they ignore the person. So be open about why you're there, but understand, right? I mean, if you want to recruit developers or recruit co-founders that are developers, understand their languages, understand what value you can bring to them. Because if you show up and you bring no value, they won't want you back and you won't want to be there either. So, um, Also volunteer. So if you volunteer today, great. Bring people to events too, because um, you know, user groups are always needing more people, right? Um, and then uh, you know, obviously present at events. So a couple on the, uh, your right hand side, You'll see I went to Startup Weekend 4, there's 100 people there, Startup Weekend 5, 100 people. Um, I presented an idea at Black Box Monday, which is kind of a present your idea thing, and then Beta MN, which they'll have another one coming around too. I recommend you get out to those. You're going to meet people, you're going to learn about ideas and what other people are doing, 
and it's just a great experience. So, um, Angel List. How many people are on Angel List? Great. Get on Angel List if you're looking for co-founders or people to connect with. It's great. Um, I met one of my co-founders on there, and um, I've connected with other people to run ideas by who are in the industry or in different industries to say, hey, what do you think of this idea? And people are really open to meeting, and that's what's great. Like, there's another session about how to get kind of the community going here of like startups, and meeting and just talking to people is the most important thing. And I've yet to meet somebody that won't like give us the time of day, right? I mean, most people have been awesome. Um, Co-founders Lab is uh, where I found my other co-founder on. And it's actually funny because there's not a ton of people on there from Minneapolis. But if you go to the Bay Area or New York, this thing is like hot. It's awesome. And it looks like they kind of do franchise stuff. So if you're looking to kind of help the startup community here, Co-Founders Lab, I don't think they've got a franchise here. Send them an email. Tell them, hey, you want to help? And see what they can do to help facilitate that here. So, um, Technical co-founders. So everything I'm going to say about technical co-founders here applies to co-founders. But I, I feel like, well, first of all, how many people in here are non-technical? How many people are technical? Oh, that's great. Wow. You're going to like what I have to say next, then, because um, you know, make sure before you approach a technical co-founder that you kind of have your concept polished, right? I mean, if somebody's going to build something or develop something, they don't want to hear, I think it might do this, or I don't know, what, you know, what do you think? Because unless they're willing to help you shape this idea that you really aren't sure of, um, you know, that, it, it just doesn't go well. Um, also, know the platform, right? Is this an iOS app? Is it an Android thing? Is it a, a web app? Because um, that's important, right? You don't want to be talking to an Android developer and say, yeah, and it's going to be on the iPhone. Because they're going to be like, you're wasting my time. Um, and also, understand the data behind like the model. So when I say that, you know, uh, how are they going to sign in? Do you want social sign in with like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter? Or do you want it to be a separate thing? Um, you know, uh, are people going to connect with other people? And understand what information they would need to do that. Uh, a good example, I was uh, at a Ruby user group. And there was a guy who was creating a lost and found. And he was talking about, all right, I've got lost items and I've got found items. And I was like, but aren't, isn't like item one thing and it just has a status of lost or found? And he's like, mm, I don't know, you know, and I was like, well, I'll let you figure that out, you know, <laughs> um, because that's the part that, you know, it's the details that can ruin kind of the next steps, because that's kind of how, the, how the, the model works out, and if you're fighting over those things, the rest isn't going to work, so. Um, also know what you don't know, right? I mean, don't come in knowing, you know, saying you know development, or saying you know sales and marketing, and then realize, you know, you don't, you know. Put that on the table, be honest, and then also know what you're going to contribute, right? If you're, if you're a developer, you probably aren't going to be cold calling, right? That's probably not your key focus. And if you're sales and marketing, don't try to code, right? You're just going to get in the way. Um, so find a partner, partner that's willing to work for equity. This, to me, is probably one of the most important things, also as, fi as far as finding a local person. You can go online, you can go to like Elance or any site like that um, to find talent that you can pay. The problem is, is that they're not really invested, right? I mean, what they're looking for is billable hours, you know? Whether or not the product works or not, in fact, they're actually kind of incentivized to not make it work because they can bill longer. Now, that's, that's a jaded view of that, but the, the idea, though, is you want them to be a part of it, and you want them, you know, to work for equity. And you also want to be an equal partner, right? You're not here to try to take something from them, you know? If you own 90% of the company and they own 10%, they can leave. What do they care, right? You know, they've got the code. They wrote the code. If, if uh, as a non-technical co-founder, you got to hold up your end of the bargain. And um, that, to me, is... 
you know, part of the reason that you need to be equal partners. Because it, it, it just doesn't work that way, so. Um, so uh, find out what languages or platforms they prefer, right? I mean, it's important that you know that because as you go out and meet with other people, they're gonna ask you, so what's it written in? Or how are you guys hosting and managing it, et cetera. You don't need to know all the details of it, but it's just good information. And then one of the things I think is most important is discussing and aligning on ethics, growth, and also partnership agreements. Because if your idea is to you know, build an MVP and go out and raise a million dollars in venture capital, and their idea is, hey, this is kind of something fun I wanted for my family and friends, it's not gonna work. Um, and have that discussion early, right? Um, also, one of the things that we discussed about when we were starting our stuff was having a non-profit uh, or a charitable aspect to what we do. So there's this great plan out there called the 111 plan, which is 1% equity, 1% of time, and 1% of uh, revenue or profit goes towards charitable interests. And to me, that's one of those things, giving back is probably one of the more important components of what you're doing, right? If you're just in it to get rich, you know, great, but you know, you should give back, and um, I don't know, that's my opinion, but. Um, and then be honest about your intentions and expectations, right? I mean, if, if this is just, um, you know, if this is just a side job or a hobby, be honest, up front. Um, but if you're, if, if, you're, if you're planning to quit your job and do this full time, everybody's gotta know that, right? Because you gotta have the money to do that. I mean, you could, but that would be a bad idea. Um, Establish how you're gonna to work together, right? Communication, communication's critical, right? Email, phone, uh, you know, social media, whatever. Also response times. So one of the things when we were first getting started, you know, I'd get an email, I'd respond right back. And it was good that, you know, we had that instant feedback because if I took 24 hours to get back on that, um, you know, Mike would have said, eh, you know, I don't know if this is gonna work out. Because you gotta figure out your times and schedules too. Because if somebody is, responding to emails in the morning, and the other person's responding at night, all of a sudden you're almost 24 hours off on a cycle, and that can be bad, especially when you need to get stuff done fast. So um, start small with timelines and deliverables, right? I mean, just like an MVP, you're testing a lot of stuff out. Hey, here's this uh, paragraph, what do you think? Hey, here's this uh, set of code. Here's kind of a screenshot of what I'm looking for, and then, um, and you'll know, right? You're gonna start to know based off of those interactions how this is working and how it's gonna go. Hold each other accountable, right? If, if they're not, you know, this isn't a time for Minnesota nice, right? This is a time for, hey, you said this is gonna be done, why is it not done? And then basically, in my opinion, right, the first 10 days are gonna tell you whether or not you guys are having success or whether you're, you're working together, so. Um, and be okay to say this isn't working out and, and walk away, right? Because it, it's, it's not gonna do you any good to hang around or them either. So, um, managing the process. One of the things that we focus on is like, what tools are we gonna use to communicate and keep track of stuff? So, Trello, Asana, Google Docs, Dropbox, um, Google Apps, Salesforce, uh, are actual tools, right? They're great, we've used Trello, and it's been good because we've got accountability and who's doing what, and you can post stuff to it. Um, but also strategies for managing the process. Meet in person regularly, and this is part of the reason I said you should have a local person, because if you got somebody in the, you know, California or New York or even overseas, time zones are off, you gotta do meetups, you know, and, and there's something to be said about showing up to a location, right? You guys all showed up here. Somebody else can watch this online, that's great, but it's not the same. Attend events together, delegate, right? Delegating's huge, because that's how trust gets built within the entire process. And also, you know, be, become friends, right? I mean, if you don't like the person you're working with, it's not gonna work out, you know? It doesn't mean you have to be the best man at their wedding or anything like that. It just means get to know them and, you know, appreciate them in their life. So here's a screenshot of Asana that probably doesn't look good. Um, trust me, it's really cool. And then same for uh, Trello. And then Google Apps for Business. How many people have used Google Apps for Business? Yeah, it's awesome, right? I mean, you got your email, docs, everything in there all in one. Um, if you're lucky enough to sign up before they went to paid, it's still free for up to 10 users, but um, for the new people, sorry. Um, money, so how many people, so 
how many people know what the what this is, why this is? Phil does because I told I don't know if I told him. And I'm like, so how many of you have heard of Airbnb? So Airbnb actually produced these cereal boxes. This was this was to help fund their startup. It's it's kind of crazy, but when it comes to money, my recommendation, right? Spend like it's a hobby, because it is. Unless you got money coming in, this is a hobby. That's my opinion. Don't make any big bets, right? This is a marathon. Also learn from other mistakes. So the reason I put Airbnbs up there, uh, 1,000 days. So they did basically a three-year review of all the things that they did. So around the 2008 um, Democratic Convention in Denver, they're like, oh, this is going to be great. There's no hotel rooms. Airbnb is going to be awesome. And they show like the traffic chart, and it's like a blip. And they're like, OK, what can we do to keep that momentum? Can we have a convention every week? You know, and they're like, no, it's not going to work. But it's a really great video to watch, because you can kind of see all the different things that they had to do. They did these boxes. They paid off their debt by doing those things. They got on CNN and all that stuff. And it's funny, because one guy showed one of the text messages, and his mom's like, so you guys a cereal company now? Like, what are, what are you guys doing? You know. So, um, also Kickstarter. The first year of Kickstarter is a really great read. Um, all the different founders in Kickstarter talk about their first year, and it's funny because one of the first years is like 2001, another one's 2006, and you can kind of see that you know these ideas take time, right? The the overnight successes you hear about are like four, five, six, eight years in the making. So. Know that, right? It's a long play because, you know, it's, it just doesn't work out that way. But, and what I would say is this is also don't go out seeking venture capital. This is my opinion. If you're a venture capital person or whatever, I apologize, but you're not ready for it, right? If you ever watch Shark Tank, the first thing you're going to say is, okay, this is great. So uh, how much you have in sales last year? So what they're going to want is revenue and they're going to want equity. And the hard part there is once you take somebody else's money, now you're beholden to them. And now you gotta, and now you gotta deliver. And maybe you don't like the idea anymore. Tough. You now have to report to them. Whereas it was, you know, hey, just you three guys or, or gals before working on this thing, now you gotta execute on that. So um, if you do need to raise money, like I said, pre-sell. Otherwise, use platforms that are more fun, friendly. If, if you have a physical product you're trying to sell, try Craigslist, right? Etsy, eBay. You could do a Kickstarter. Be wary of Kickstarter in the way that, you know, I have a buddy of mine that was at Smart Things, and so when they did their Kickstarter, it was great. They got all this money, but now you got to deliver. And they had, you know, if you have manufacturing production problems, stuff like that, it can be tough. But it can also be great, too, right? I mean, there's plenty of awesome success. Pebble, the uh, kind of iOS watch, great success with that as well. So, um, so this is kind of wrapping up. I know, you know, kind of the way, you know, when do you go into beta, right? Because this idea to beta. To me, you're always in beta, right? I don't care if you've been doing this for five years. You're always in beta. You're always testing. You're always trying something different. You're always trying to get going with your product or service. So. Um, that's it. Uh, basically, I think what we'll do is move into questions, if people have questions. And then one other thing I would like to do, since this is idea to beta, um, a couple of years ago when I had the idea for room poll, I wanted to be able to, you know, because it, so the concept behind room poll is this, you got a room full of people, right? There's a lot of you guys that probably have ideas or need things that other people in the audience have that can contribute and vice versa. So I wanted to be able to kind of understand the room and have people help people. So um, let me do this here. So I, I will give out t-shirts. We'll do this at the end. But uh, basically, what I figure we do is hop into questions and then um, maybe do idea pitches too. Is that cool? So that's it. Questions? In the back. That's a good question. I mean, NDAs are usually like, it's like a prenup, you know? <laughs> um, 
unless you're really worried about, and this is my opinion, right? I'm not a lawyer or anything, but unless you're really worried that that person's going to take your idea and run with it, I wouldn't worry about it. it. There's a great story about, you know, Google, right? When they came up with their search algorithm, they were trying to sell it to Yahoo and all these guys. And they're like, okay, should we patent this? You know, what should we do? And they just said, don't worry about it. You're six months ahead of the competition. Just keep building and creating. Because if they try to create what you're doing, you've got prior art and just keep moving forward. But on the flip side, if you've got something that you've got either a patent or competitive advantage on, it's not a bad idea. There's a, there's a great site called uh, Docracy, I believe. It's got basically open source um, documents for uh, privacy policies, NDAs, partnership agreements, stuff like that. So does that, does that help answer? Yes. Okay. Other questions? Yeah, and I don't know how much those hold up in court, right? But I think it's just, it's, that is, that is a hard part about it. Because you're basically saying, yeah, I don't trust you, sign this. And it's like, okay, well, all right, you know. What was that? Oh, that's a cool name. Yeah, okay, so friend, friend, friend EA. Friend EA. Okay, cool, I like that. So it's kind of a working relationship. Hey, I'm not going to um, hurt you, you don't hurt me. Cool. Other questions, comments? Yes. Yeah, so it's funny, I mean, because, you know, um, when we did, you know, we got three people. One of the things I recommend, right, if you have two people and it's 50-50, that's hard. Bring in a third person, if you can, to at least kind of settle those disputes. Because then it's almost one of those, like, okay, well, 60% of the company says this, you know. Um, but, you know, one of the things that we agreed on early on was, like, on technical decisions, if it's a tie, it goes to the technical person. If it's a sales and marketing decision, a tie goes to the sales and marketing person, you know. So it's, you know, now speaking about equity and stuff like that, one of the things that um, I've always found with equity is it's like it's, it's kind of useless, right? I mean, when I was, um, I was part of techies.com back in the late 90s, and I had, you know, like some odd number of shares. And everybody's like, oh, these are great. You know, I'm like, it's paper. Who, you know, we were supposed to go public. We didn't. So what was that worth to me? Nothing, you know. At jobs to web, yeah, there was equity, but the whole time I was like, yeah, I, I don't know if this will pan out. You got to be skeptical, right? I mean, all along the way, you got to be skeptical. So it wasn't like I was banking on that to do anything. And so um, when we did actually sell, it was nice. There was people that were complaining. They're like, oh, I didn't get enough or whatever. And I'm like, who cares? You know, like I didn't get anything from the last one. So um, and then deciding equity shares. To me, since it's really worth nothing, you know, if it's pretty much equal amongst co-founders, great. You know, if you ever go get finance funding or whatever, you can figure it out then too. But have the discussion up front because what you don't want to do is go get funding and then somebody goes, uh, I want 80%. So. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. How does this thing break apart? So, so the point was, if, if, if this isn't going to go well, how does it end, right? Um, and we actually did that just a couple of weeks ago. We just put together, it was a document that was, it was kind of dissolution of the, or dissolution of the company. And um, it talks about, you know, if, if one founder wants to leave the company, what happens? If two leave the company, what, if there's one left, what happens? If there's none left, well, I mean, the company can't really go on. But if you create a legal entity, it 
technically goes on. Who has the tax liability and stuff? So. At what point should you pull it out and report? It's a good question. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, we did it once we were ready to kind of have a beta launched, just because now it's going to be out in the public, and if it takes off, you want to protect yourself, right, and everybody else within it. So we at least just kind of had a document that said, hey, here's who owns what. And also, right, if, if the company has $2,000 in expenses, who's contributing? You know, if, if you own 5% of the company, you're not paying that whole thing, right? So um, are we almost out of time? Yep. That's horrible. I, I apologize. Um, OK, so anybody want to win some t-shirts? OK, go to roompoll.com. Also on Room Poll, if you're looking for a co-founder, there's a co-founder poll there. Fill that out, and then I'll put that together, and then we'll send it out to everybody and what they're looking for and what they need. So we're just trying to help, you know, facilitate some of this stuff out there. So, um, so go to roompoll.com, turn on your uh, location request, and then uh, I'm asking for phone number because we're going to have people turn on their phones. So I'll just call the winners, but I won't keep the information. It'll be deleted. If you want, I can, you can stand here. I'll delete it for you. So. And if it doesn't work, let us know, too, because this is part of testing a MVP, right? So. So the poll is just some idea to make it. Yep. Well, no. Oh, shoot, I didn't turn on. OK. See, this is, this is the problem with a bad tech demo. <clears throat> I didn't turn on the poll for the t-shirt, because I didn't want people filling it out ahead of time. That would have been bad. You can actually see the, uh, apologize. You can see how fast we, we can get a pull up though. Come on. Okay, try it now. <laughs> or not. <laughs> no, oh, sorry. Epic fail. I'll hear about this from my co-founders. <coughs> All right, let's see if that works. There it is, free t-shirt. All right, so turn on your ringer on your phone. We'll call somebody. This seriously was my goal like two years ago, so. Everybody's phone ringing? What size shirt? Medium, all right. That's kind of fun. All right, thank you everybody, I appreciate it.